Welcome back to Fitness Podcast with Mzi. My name is Mzi. Please like and subscribe. Share this video. Let's go, guys. We are on episode 13. Let's run into it, guys. I made a prep again because I've got a lot of things I need to say and we have to continue with uh, the cardio box training because now I'm not only doing training but I'm also sharing some ideas. Let's, let's run through at a nice pace and let's allow others to catch up as well and, and and then we can take it from there i would be happy if you were to tell me what do you think we can go back to choreography and music and deal with it like and iron it out so that we we don't just go ahead and 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 and, and leave people behind because i'm sure there are people who haven't joined yet who need this program but more and more people are coming in and i'm happy to see that Right, so I've got a nice prep today. So today we're going to talk about technique finally. Uh, we're going to be dealing with uh, the stances, the, 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 the strikes. And then after that we, we're going to <clears throat> go to a point where we talk about a, a, a professionals versus a, a non-professionals. We'll make different examples on that. And then we we're going to touch on on how technique helped Adesanya in the fight against Pereira, and yes, those are the things we're going to talk about today. Right, let's let's jump in, man, uh, with technique. Right. So unfortunately, I thought that I was going to do this in a spot where I'm standing and you can see my whole body, and then so that I can actually show you. But unfortunately. Where we are now, this is the the, 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 the point uh, that we're presenting it at. But you will go back to the videos. I've got a lot of uh, uh, kick videos. I'm going to put box videos. I'm going to put links <coughs> on the description. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, one or two links on the description. I want you to check the technique. I will make time and do those technique videos. I promise I will make time and do that. I'm still fixing my garage down there. I need to move out some of the things so that I've got enough air, enough space. I don't like doing videos and there are so many things happening behind me. Uh, uh, so yeah, um, uh, just give me a bit of time. I'm going to fix that. Right, let's go. So before we, st we talk about the strikes, let's talk about the two stances. I'm sure fighters will know better. I'm not really a fighter. I, uh, I, I just got e opportun an opportunity to train with fighters. Uh, shout out to uh, 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 Thai Fitness. Uh, I just got an opportunity to train with fighters there and, and I really appreciate that opportunity. So guys, if you see me touching my face, it's because this light is so harsh and I look so shiny there. So uh, sometimes I'm not sure if it's something on my skin or it's just the reflection of the light. But when I edit it, I always uh, uh, sort of dim that light down so that like it's not as shiny as it looks like. As I'm looking at it now, it's so shiny. Maybe I shouldn't look at it. Right, so we get to the first, the two stances. <clears throat> so you get two stances in fighting that I'm going to, the ones I'm going to talk about is two, the front stance and the combat stance. Now, through different uh, sports, combat sports, they will use different names for these stances. But it basically means a front stance, you are standing square. That means your right foot and your whole left foot in line knees slightly bent, guts are up, you are looking and your target is directly in front of you. That's a front stance. Combat stance, you just take a step to the back, leave a nice room in between your legs. Uh, I like how Master Gordon, uh, 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 Master uh, uh, Gerald says it, that you, 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 you put a river in between your legs, then you've got your lead foot, you've got your rear foot. Others will tell you you keep the heel of the ground. Others will tell you you keep the heel down on the ground. I will say whatever feels comfortable, right? As long as when you punch, you are going to rotate that leg until the knee, the hips are square and the angle is off the ground. And then you push that punch too, right? So that is the, the two stances. So the first one is the front stance 
feet square second one is a combat stance right mostly when it comes to fighting there are different uh, theories others will tell you you keep one side you fight on one side you don't change others will tell you it's better to train both sides so that you can be able to fight in any way like for instance uh, i'll make an example about israel adesanya is an orthodox but whenever he stood orthodox meaning on the right hand right hand at the back leading with the left foot Pereira chopped his his, his legs whenever he stood southpaw with the right foot in front Pereira was losing confidence you understand and and he was like oh i see that he's losing confidence when i switch so he switched more you understand which is the same thing I saw when he was fighting Kanania. When he switches to Southpaw, a lot of people don't become very confident to go to him. I don't know why, but they don't. Anyway, let's move on. And then we we, 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 we finish the two stances. Then we go to the six punches. So uh, my breakdown of, of the punches on the front stance uh, is going to be, be a little bit different other people will show you some jabs like this on the front stance and then i will just show you cross punches on the front stance because i'm not going to pretend as if i'm a perfect on that i will just show you what i know and what i do right i'm, I'm still yet to understand the japping of the front stance but i've heard people say it uh, I don't know what do you do maybe you just use your hips I don't know but I'll just show you uh, cross punches and so everything that is cross so you will be on your guard right so when you throw your cross you rotate your hips and rotate your punch so a punch is an extension of the arm extension of the elbow and a rotation of your forearm so there come back there come back so the point is to twist push and pull push and pull push and pull i know that you'll be told maybe you were taught that you punch halfway i've had a lot of conversations about this with a lot of uh, yes you know when you're saying something and you're not that confident about it but it has to be said with with some people uh, where one of them said to me that when you when you when you punch and the elbow is left slightly bent that's safe for beginners right i haven't really verified this but it makes a lot of sense which if you remember when billy planks released Tybo, he said when you punch you punch you don't extend all the way the elbow that's good for business uh, for beginners but if you are at least let me say intermediate let me not say pro you know that if you've got a tight fist and the arm the muscles on the arm now i'm sure about this one are contracted you push you can go all the way until the elbow is straight and bring it back why is that because these muscles are contracted that means the joint can be controlled nothing will snap here if these muscles are contracted but if they are not contracted yes you will injure your elbow so it's important that when you hold your punch it has to be fully lo locked like this this is how you hold the punch not here not here not here yeah in a glove you will actually be grabbing in a glove so there is your punch so you push and pull push and pull whilst you're doing that you rotate your torso rotate your hips rotate your knee of the of the side that is punching rotate your angle and release the heel from the ground until the foot the foot must lift off and you uh, pivot right i think i explained it sitting down hey guys i've got a blanket here it's a bit cool right that is that is those are the cross punches then same as with hooks you are there so this is how a, a one guy taught me how to throw a hook so i don't know if this is yeah, let me use the earphones this is your opponent's gut this 
is your opponent's guard. He's in front of you. This is close range fighting, right? Because you use looping punches, that is hooks and uppercuts, when it's close range. So this is your opponent's guard. So what you do from here, you push, right? You push the arm forward and then rotate it. Then when you bring it back, bring it back here quickly. Please don't do this again. Just bring it back the shooter as soon as possible. So push it to the front and rotate it. So again, push it to the front and rotate it. Practice this. Push to the front and rotate it. Push, rotate. Uh, it's also this you can also do with a hook. This and this, they are both fine. Okay. Now when you do it, you don't do this, obviously. You do it in one motion. One motion. Push and rotate. What else is happening? The torso, the hips, the knee, the ankle. Push, rotate around the guard from there, around the guard back here, around the guard. So when you throw a hook, you don't go all the way. It's just here, around the guard and back here. Around the guard, you stop it in line with your eyes. Or you can just push through your head, through the head of the opponent, but like just until here, yeah. Don't go all the way, just here, boom, back. Boom, you can master this if you practice. <coughs> Something was sitting here, I had to cough, and I'm not going to edit this out. Around the guard, around the guard, around the guard. Right, I think I explained the hook. Remember, you still do the same rotation, knee, ankle, torso, blah, 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 blah. Now you've got an uppercut. An uppercut is also the same. You get under, right, you get under. Most of the time, it's best if you use your body to get under the Keep that elbow on your ribs, very important. I think I didn't mention when I was breaking down. Elbows on the ribs, guards up and they must touch so that you can know where they are. If they don't touch, if your guards are not touching your face, what's going to happen, you'll start here. I remember when my coach taught me elbow. That if your guards are not touching your face, you'll start here. You will keep going. By the time class ends, you will be here like Pereira. Now you'll be punching from like this. Right. So but if the guards are here, you know they are here. So the the, 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 the punch must come from straight from the face to the target, from the target back to the face. So you push and pull. Push and pull. I think I also skipped that. So if you watch the whole video, you will get all this because it's nicely minced. So we are on the uppercut. So the uppercut, what you want is you want, this is the guard of your opponent and you want to go under. So with the uppercut, what you do is you go under. Yeah, there. I just need a nice breakdown. <laughs> Remember, push and rotate. So now you drop the shoulder from here. What is important in an uppercut is that your elbow must not do this. A lot of people, when they do uppercuts, they do this. They do bicep curls. So you're not doing bicep curls. The, as the punch is bent like this, you take it from the chin to the target. From the chin to the target. So if the target is lower, remember uppercut is not only for the face. You can take it to the body. From the chin to the target. This person is closer next to you. From the chin to the target. There. 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 Same rotation, right? I think I can't believe I don't have a nice breakdown of an uppercut because I don't want to say you first drop. When I train people, I'll do that. First drop the guard and then keep that elbow bent because that's what I want to get. And then punch. So you want to punch with an elbow bent like this, not with an elbow straight and closing. No, it comes from here like this goes to the target, goes to the target. Use the rotation of the body to propel the punch. There, there, there. Plus even my uppercut I can see now on the camera, it's a bit tele telegraphed because I first do this first. It has to actually come straight from here to the target, right? Uh, 
I'll go back and work on that. I need to make a, I need to find a video where I'm going to watch a, a, a better, someone that breaks it down nicely so that I can, I can come here and, and, and present something a little bit more structured like I did with the hook. Uh, I, I thought I knew this. <laughs> okay, let's move on. I like the fact that uh, at least this part shows that I'm not perfect. Right, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's go now to let's do the punches first before we change the, the stances. Then we go to the oh, before we go to knee strikes and kicks. Now we go to the combat stance. Now you are no longer standing square, you've got one foot in front and another at the back, your guards are up, you are ready. Right, boxers will tell you, you tuck in that chin, you round those shoulders because they also help you, and you are here. I do that sometimes in my classes. Right now, these punches have got numbers. Okay. I don't know about the front stance, but these ones specifically, I know they've got numbers. So the first one everybody knows is a jab. So a jab is still the same thing, extension of the arm, extension of the elbow and the rotation of the forearm, there is a jab. But now what happens is that there are two most times ways that you'll find a jab being thrown. Sometimes you will throw a jab with a step forward. So as you step, you throw your jab. Still straighten that, keep that elbow in, push and pull, push and pull, right? Push and pull, step forward. You use your hips, your hips, the leading hips to direct the punch. Can you see this is not going across the body. It's on the lead hand. Then when you pull back, that jab comes back here. Then you've got a cross. Now a cross, you throw it almost the same way. The same way we're throwing the punches on the front stance. It comes from the back there. You rotate everything. You go to the target, hit and bring it back again very important hit and bring it back to your chin where it's touching so one this is two this is a lead straight punch or jab this is a rear straight punch or a cross jab cross jab cross jab cross so if you look at this it's like i'm being pulled so when you throw a jab you are there when you throw a, a, a cross you are from here you're going there so so to throw a proper cross you need to come from there and throw it a proper jab from there and throw it boom 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 i think i did that one let's move on now you've got your hooks hooks are three and four so all the lead side is odd numbers the rear side it's even numbers boxing 101 same cut up remember to the front and rotate to the front and rotate can also do it like this is fine front and rotate very important on the wrist make sure your wrist is not bent keep it nice and straight because if it's bent and you hit a bag you might injure yourself so to the front and rotate that's a lead hook punch number three hook and then rear hook is the same as the cross punch you go all the way to the front and across boom so it's a jab and a yo oh, sorry it's a lead hook and a rear hook they don't have a one name for lead hook rear hook three four elbows are in three four one two three four one two three four now we go to the uppercuts this uppercut is not done by many people uh, a lot of people in my class they want to rotate when they do this uppercut no you don't remember it's on the lead foot so you take it there there from here to there it's like a jab with a bent elbow there again you don't do this you don't do a bicep curl you take it as it is there, there that's a lead uppercut 
same thing with the hips and knees and ankles so lead uppercut that's number five rear uppercut that's number six with the rotation lead uppercut rear uppercut five six five six remember these punches can go anywhere in the body it can go to the body it can go to the face that, can you see that one looked like an uppercut and then it became a hook those are things that happen in fights you shouldn't uh, worry much about them these are basics that is why i've got a point say don't teach amateurs pro things so now you've got these are basics one two three four five six those are the punches one two three four five six one two three four five six one two three four five six <laughs> right with time if you practice you will get used to it and you can can see oh, really? oh i'm not sweating i'm just shiny right i think this is where we move to kicks and knee strikes right in my cardio box class I only do one type of any strike and one type of a kick right and that's a front knee strike and a front kick the reason I don't do side kicks is because they are very difficult to do they need a lot of practice pro pro kind of stuff right so I don't do them because of that reason because I will do them and then I get to my class I demonstrate I practice demonstrate one or two people are able to do them the rest of the class cannot I right, you go almost even Guma marathons you watch the videos only the front row do them better do them right even even in the place that has got more people that do sidekicks in the world which is KZN only maybe the front two rows will get them right but from there going back they cut right and and that's more than half the class go back look at what i'm talking about go to any instructor that does sidekicks and uh, mainly sidekicks you will check look at their videos one most of them or the pictures the instructor will be there doing the sidekick alone and then the rest of the floor i don't know like the other one is a fish kick, another one is a frog kick. I was not saying people are doing frog kicks, but yeah. And and it kinda hurts. But 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 that's the world we live in. I think uh, if I don't address this kind of things, nobody is going to. So this podcast is here for that. I'm sorry if I step on anybody's foot. I didn't do it intentionally. I'm, I'm just sharing what I believe is important. And yes in this platform this is where i'm putting because remember instructors work hard to build classes to build a following and the last thing you want is to be coming there to destroy something that someone has worked so hard to build or to just put a bad name on it so i have to say it in a manner that is still respectful hence i'm sticking to what i do so uh, again I just say, even if you do it in your class, please look at your people, check how many are actually able to do it. And if you really, really, really have to do these things, maybe you should have a nice breakdown how you go to, go to lessmills.com, check Les Mills Body Combat, look how they build it through so that at least people can get a, a, a to a particular level remember if you can't take it there you can still do it whilst you are doing it low and you need to share that information and everything does all right let's go to any list any strikes so any strikes <laughs> any strike uh, i'm not going to do switch knee strikes i'll just do normal knee strikes from the rear foot so from the rear foot, you take that, that, that knee from the back there. Hey, I don't know, I can't. I think I was actually from this position. Then your hands are together at the top, 
right? I'm not going to go to uh, what you learn in Muay where you have to block with the other side whilst you are using the other hand to propel the knee. Uh, but let's do this one uh, where you are in a clinch. So you are holding this person. My imagine you are holding this person like this behind their head or you are in a clinch position where you are holding each other's arms you are wrestling so you want to throw a knee so you raise your knee so you first sink to rise you sink as if you push your hips backwards so that you can have power to go up so you 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 you, you first go back then as you go up you pull and you push your knee forward so there should be that motion where that that the arm wearing shots <laughs> then you push that knee forward but I'll, I, I think this is something I can demonstrate better when I am when I am standing because now it's mainly now the lower body and you can't see what I'm talking about but when you do a kick you still do the same thing you raise the knee as high as you want to kick and then you push the kick using the ball of your foot you hit the target so you raise and yeah let me see if i can stand and demonstrate this let's see let's see let's see so you raise the knee and then you push the kick raise the knee push the kick same as with the knee lift first there then push the knee forward, right? So in Muay Thai, they will also teach you to have that guard there and push. I think I did, I did something, at least I showed you. I showed you a bit of something there. I showed you a bit of something there. There's my blanket. Get that blanket back. Whew. Hey, then you've got traveling. So when you're moving from this stance, when you're going forward, you move the, the foot in front first and the one at the back after. When you are going back, the one at the back after and the one in front after. But now, the, the problem when we do our kick classes, is it the same thing? Yeah, it's the same thing, right? So when your movement you are doing it, what I wanted to say about movement is that the movement I always focus to because focus on because people, what do I say? Abantu, they. I don't want to do a lot of kickball changes. Kickball changes on my feet when I'm doing a, a kick class. I don't want to do a lot of them. The, the only ball change I do is just a tap, then I lead with the other foot. The reason being, a lot of people, especially who are new in, in aerobics, this uh, boom, 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 they find it difficult to do. Uh, now you are changing the rhythm, you're moving them from, it's, it's, it's beautiful when people know how to do it. But if you teach a class that has got also a lot of beginners, because classes are built by beginners at a gym, at a, at a gym level. If you teach a class like that, then the best thing is to match, 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 who right, left, right, boom, right, left, right, boom, right, left, right, boom, right, left, right. Now the right, left, right goes with the punches. Left, right, boom, 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 boom. You can repeat one side, other, you understand, but instead of, that's changing the rhythm, instead of, Boom, 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 choo, choo. <laughs> Okay, cool. I think you get me. And <clears throat> where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Yeah, I think I think this. Let's leave it here. Regarding uh, uh, the punching and everything. Hey. Ooh. Okay, let's get into the second topic. But I'm almost done. I'm almost. I'm almost done. Uh, we should not teach beginners pro things it's wise not to teach beginners pro thing i think i think it, it links better with what with what i just explained i just showed you the basic things with these movements you can do 
different thousands of combinations with these movements alone. The problem is that sometimes you go to a class and you throw a lead hook and people jab and you don't correct them. Now when you want to do a jab, they feel like they are doing the same thing, but they are actually not. Because when you throw a lead hook, the rotation that is needed, you work on different muscles than when you are just throwing a jab. Right? Because now it becomes a transverse movement, which is another anatomical plane. When we get to warm up, I think we did it during the warm-up breakdown go back check the the things that i said we do when we are actually warming up a class the planes of anatomy and everything else yes all right let's go back uh, i like the cycling examples uh, when I, I i got into cycling when i finished my cycling course uh, which was sometime in february i believe one of the things that I, I went and did was that on the manual, I checked the recommendations. Then I also went and did my own research to find out what are the cadence of an average cyclist on the road when they are racing. Remember, we are doing a racing simulation. So when you're doing a simulation, it's important to simulate even the level of intensity because you don't want to, to bring a very high or a very low level of intensity. Then I saw the, okay, average cycles, they cycle between 65 and 90 RPM, right? Some can push up to 100. Then pro cyclists cycle between 90 RPM and above 120 going up, right? Those are pros. Now, when you are teaching your class, it makes a lot of sense to match that of an average cyclist. Why? Because you've got a lot of average people in your class. You can allow the pros to cycle faster, especially when you're doing speed intervals. You can allow them to cycle faster. But what I usually do, I tell them to increase the resistance so that it can pull them back and then they can still cycle at the speed that they want. I mean, you understand? Yeah. But sometimes maybe they want their feet to go faster. On some songs, you can allow them to express themselves and go as fast as they can. You get me? Cool. But with the right resistance. Now, when you get into a box class, that's the same kind of mentality I bring. I'm not going to get there and do a Mayweather combo. No. Bam, 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 you know, give them breaks, some pauses so that they are able to get the move. They are able to get the move. Bam, 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 bam. You get me, right? That, hence, I usually do four counts, build them into eight build them into 16, hardly past 16, unless it's at the end of the class and we're just having fun. I just add knee lifts, which are not much, just to give them a break in between the combo, just to add something else so that it doesn't get too boring, right? <laughs> too boring as if it's already boring, but it doesn't get boring, let me see. Uh, I watched another video uh, after I spoke to Gerald, and in that video, Mother Mayweather is saying good I just now I don't want to say let me let me mix it up. What I'm going to say is between what uh, Gerald told me and what I saw on the video when I went to find it. Every movement that he does on the meets, he does them in his fights. And then he went on to say the problem is that when we train people or he was actually specifically talking about young boxers what they do is that they see what he's doing and then they start practicing it but you find that now these punches are not full these punches are half the rotation is not there a lot is not there yes the meats are making noise 
so i'm going to hit a bit on the pts you you go on instagram now on any pts page you check the the technique of the member is not there you know you find that even the, the pets are actually being bought to the hand yes you you help a person when they are punching you know you help them to give them a bit of power but you don't punch for them so you find you hearing noise but this person is doing this you know it's not from here to there you know hence it's important to start slow and build that pace with time build that pace with time master the basics i remember when i was still teaching rumble i would always focus on the basics and i could see some of the people getting bored it was like if you bored get out i'll stick with the people that want to learn how to punch one of the reasons why it's important to do a full punch is because you recruit more muscle fibers when you do prop range of motion doesn't only work when we are stretching and when we are doing mobility even when we are executing power moves uh, we still need that range of motion you understand so the moment you do a full punch you recruit more muscle fibers if you do this maybe you're using only 20 percent of your muscle fibers but if you're doing this now you are recruiting even the synergists you are recruiting even all the stabilizers what do you stabilize here nothing but here your abs need to work right to stabilize the movement the, the, the shoulder needs to work to stabilize the movement you understand and also help with the with, 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 with the punching you get me um, what is this muscle they call it a uh, uh, boxers muscle it's the, it's the serratus anterior the one that shows here for that to work you really need to rotate and you really need to punch, you need to extend that arm. If you are here, nothing will happen here. You can even feel it as I'm extending. I can feel it, right? I'm feeling it. And then when I'm rotating, I even feel it more. You get me? So those things are important that you know, but if you can go speed, wee, 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 and you're not punching, you're going to sweat. Why? Because you are working, the heart is working. It has to pump more blood to the muscles, right? The arms are moving. It's an exercise. But what type of an exercise is this? It's an exercise, but it's short any range of motion. The muscles are not working. The muscles are not working fully. You understand so yes when it comes to the cardio you are working but when it comes to building on the muscle you are not working endurance is twofold endurance has got this muscular endurance meaning you are using the muscles over and over again to get them stronger then that goes with cardio respiratory endurance that means now it is the heart the heart the lungs and, and 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 the blood vessels so when you're doing this you are doing cardiorespiratory endurance not wrong but when it comes to your muscles you are not working them now that means there is no muscular endurance you understand and these two they go hand in hand muscular endurance and cardiorespiratory endurance cardiorespiratory endurance and i remember when i was at uh, jpdsr we used to say both of them are grouped under one word called stamina right so if you go full range and you go for a long time work on the heart as well you are doing stamina cardiorespiratory and muscular endurance if you do this you are doing one cardiorespiratory endurance no muscular endurance and you will sweat your heart rate will be high you will think you're working but you wonder why your arm doesn't look like this even though you don't lift weights this is just purely a, a, a box this is just from box it's not weight i don't do it you understand so so it's it's things like that yes please don't ask me about my pain yeah but why, why is your belly not i unfortunately because when it comes to the food i'm not clear my diet is not clean my diet is not clean i won't lie my diet is not clean i'm not eating healthy at all i also take some beer especially over the weekends 
enjoy my beer, chill with my friends. That part you won't see on my social media, of course. But yes, that's another part that I do. So hence, you will find that, uh, yes, I'm happy that at least I'm able to maintain and I'm able to work, but yeah, yeah. And maybe I should try steroids. Anyway, guys, I think this is the end. Ha! Ah, there's still more. Ah, guys, no, no, this one. Okay, let me close this by the other. I've got a, a lot of editing to do today. Let me close this by uh, uh, the Adesanya versus Pereira fight. Beautiful fight, but I'm not going to talk about the fight here. Because I'm going back to the importance of basics. Uh, watching the fight, please check Israel Adesanya versus uh, Pereira. What's the, what Pereira's name? Alex Pereira. Uh, uh, he Israel has the Adesanya knocked out Pereira in the second round. But there is one thing that is clear that Adesanya was doing uh, in that fight. It was high guard. He went high guard. He made sure that he closes, you know. He made sure that Pereira's punches and kicks are hitting the guard. You understand? That means that when they were on camp, they went they went back to basics. And uh, Adesanya beat Pereira because of that. Because Pereira was here fighting like this all the time. No basics. Not even once did I see Pereira here. He no, no defense whatsoever. Because he uses his long arms to push his opponents away, you know, more than you know. But now, if you get someone that's going to lure you in and and you, as you are in then they can touch you and they are using high guard proper basics elbows in you know they close up fully then you are going to get knocked out and that's what happened to Pereira as he went to the teat of Adesanya Adesanya caught him with a one two and bah, and then bounced off the fence went again for another one two lights out lights out and and yes so those are the things uh, the importance of basics even if you see professional fighters fight they have these basics that we do so as people who are training people who are beginners it's important that we stick to basics that's my belief and i believe that that's what every master trainer wants guys i'm out of here this is on 43 minutes I'm out of here. I love you. Please subscribe, like, and share.